the hair and the hedgehog. The hair and hedgehog. This story, my dear young fox, seems to be false, but it really is true, because for my grandfather, from whom I have used, I have it. My grandfather used to say complacently, use always when relating to it to say complacently. It must be true. The story must be true, my son, or else no one could tell it to you. The story is as follows. The story is as follows. One Sunday morning, about harvest time. In harvest time, just as the buckwheat was in bloom, people have already harvested buckwheat. The sun was shining brightly in heaven. The east wind was blowing warmly over the stubble fields. The east wind was blowing warmly over the stubble fields. The larks, the larks, the a kind of bird, were singing in the air. The bees buzzing among the buckwheat. The bees buzzing among the buckwheat. The people were all going in the Sunday clothes to church. People were going to church. And all creatures were happy, and Hedgehog was happy too. Everything was seemed to be happy. Everything was happy. The Hedgehog, however, was standing by his door with his arm akimbo. He put his arm around his waist. He was enjoying the morning breezes, the morning cool air, enjoying the morning breezes, and slowly trilling a little song to himself. Ha 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 ha, and slowly trilling a little song to himself, which was neither better nor worse than the songs which hedgehogs are in the habit. Of singing on a blessed sunny morning, they are describing the song. Once he was just singing half aloud to himself, it suddenly occurred to him that it suddenly occurred to him that while his wife was washing and drying the children, his wife was washing and drying the children. The hedgehog he might very well take a walk into the field. The hedgehog was walking into the field and see how his turnips, the turnips were going on to look for the thing how they were going. The turnips were, in fact, close beside his house, very very near. And he and his family were accustomed to eat them. They used to eat turnips, accustomed to. For which reason? For which reason? Because of this, he looked upon them as his own. He looked upon them as his own. No sooner said than done. As soon as he said, he did it. No sooner said than done. The hedgehog shut the house door behind him, and took the path to the field. He walked to the field, and took the path to the field. He had not gone very far from home, and was just turning round the slow bush, which stand there outside the field. He was just turning round the slow bush, which stand there outside the field. He was very near from his his place. He didn't go very far from home. 
to go up into the tiny field when he observed at that moment he observed the hare who had gone out on business of the same kind namely maybe we can tell when he observed the hare who had gone out on business of the same kind you can tell we can name to visit his cabbage the rabbit or the hare visit wanted to visit his cabbage when the hedgehog caught sight of the hare he bade him he bade him a friendly good morning okay now we look up for this word bade okay the past participle a bid we put up we tender an offer we make we he we bid him a good morning we say good morning he said good morning to the hare but the hare who was in his own way a distinguished gentleman and frightfully haunty haunty the hare was very haunty now haunty arrogant vain conceited snobbish superior self pompous okay disdainful the hare was haunted he did not return the hare's horse reading but said to him assuming at the same time a very contemptuous manner how how do you happen to be running about here in the field so early in the morning i am taking a walk said the hare's horse a walk said the hare with a smile it seems to me that you might use your legs for better purpose it seems to me that you might use your legs for better purpose i think that you might use your legs for better purpose this is an insult this answer made the hare's horse furiously angry for because he can bear anything but an attack on his legs he can support anything but not he will not accept an attack on his legs just because they are crooked by nature they crooked by nature you should understand the word crooked it is twisting it is um, not normal okay crook it is bent or it is twisted in out of shape or out of place is it not normal so now the hedge horse said to the hare you you seem to imagine that you can do that you can do okay just one second that you can do more with your legs than with mine you seem to you can do with more with your legs than with mine that is just what you think that is just what that is just what i do think the hairy replied the hair replied that i totally think like that that can be put to the test said the hedgehog okay the hedgehog said that can be put to the test to prove that the hair is better than the hedgehog i wager i wager that if we run the race i will outstrip you i wager that if we run the race i will outstrip you vega i bet i bet okay it is a formal very formal term for bet that if we run a race and if a horse a whore a hare and the hedgehog run a race the hedgehog will win the race i will outstrip you outstrip okay go faster than outrun out distance or outpace that is ridiculous you with your short legs 
said the hare. But for my part, I am willing if you have such a monstrous fancy for it, such a big, enormous wish for the rice. What shall we wager? What shall we bet? A golden Louis d'or, a golden Louis piece, and a bottle of brandy," said the hedgehog. "Done," said the hare. "Shake hands on it, and then we may as well come off as once." "Nay," said the hedgehog. "There is no such great hurry. I am still fasting. I am still hungry." Too far, the verb too far. Nothing in my stomach. I am still fasting. I will go home first and have a little breakfast. In half an hour, I will be back again at this place. Hereupon, the hedgehog departed. As soon as the hedgehog departed, for the hare was quite satisfied with this to be satisfied with. With this. Vega. On his way, the hedgehog thought to himself, "The hare relies on his long legs, but I will contrive to get the better of him. I will concoct. I will think of. I will create or bring about deliberate a skill or artifice. Okay, or I will." Bring about. I will create. I I will devise to get better at him. He may be a right man, but he is a very silly fellow. A very silly fellow, and he shall pay for pay for what he has said. He will say. He will pay for. He shall pay for what he says. Very sad. This is very very formal. So, when the hedgehog reached home, he said to his wife, "Wife, dress thyself, dress yourself quickly. Thou must go out to the field with me. You must go out to the field with me. What is going on there?" said his wife. "I have made a wager with the hare for a gold Louis d'or and a bottle of brandy. I am to run." A race with him, and they must be present, and you must be present. Good heavens, good husband! Oh my God! The wife now cried, "Art thou not dry in thy mind? Hast thou completely lost thy wits? You are not good in your mind. You are not very well. You are completely out of mind. What can make thee want to run a race with the hare? What can make you?" Want to run the race with the hair? Hold thy tongue, women. Have your tongue, women. Mind your mind. Mind your words. Mind your words. My wife said, "Hedgehog, that is my affair. That is my problem. Don't begin to discuss things with which are matters for man. Don't begin to discuss things which are matters for man. Be off. Let's go. Dress thyself. Dress yourself." And come with me. What could the hedgehog's wife do? She was forced to obey him, whether she liked it or not. She was forced to to follow him, whether she liked it or not. So when they had set out on their way together, the hedgehog said to his wife, "Now pay attention to what I am going to say. Look, you, I will make the long field outrace course. The hare shall run." In one furrow, and I, I, I am I in another, another furrow. A furrow, okay. A furrow. This is a a plow field, a true, a tram, a channel, a hollow, for example, okay. And we will begin to run from the top, from one side of the furrow. Now all that you has to do, all that you have to do, is to place thyself here, below in the furrow. Okay, the husband start at one end, and the wife will wait for in the other end, below in the furrow. And when 
the hare arrives at the end of the furrow, on the other side of the, on the other side of you, you must cry out to him, I am here already. I am here already. She should cry out like that. Then they reach the field, and the hedgehog show his wife a place, and then walk off the field. When he reached the top, the hare was already there. Shall shall we start? Shall we start? Will we start? Said the hare. Certainly, said the hedgehog. Then both at once, so saying, each placed himself in his own furrow. The hare counted once, twice, thrice, and away. One, two, three, off. And went off like a whirlwind down the field. The hedgehog, however, only ran about three paces, about a few steps. Paces. A few steps, a few strides, a walk, a march. And then he stooped down in the furrow. He bent down in the furrow and stayed quietly where he was. He just stood waiting. When the hare therefore arrived in full career at the lower end of the field, at full stall, at full steep speed at the other end of the field, the hedgehog's wife met him with the cry, with a shout, I am here already. The hare was shocked and wondered not a little. He didn't wonder anything. He thought no other than that it was the hedgehog himself who was calling to him. For the hedgehog's wife looked just like her husband. The hare, however, thought to himself that has not been done fairly. It was wrong. There was something wrong and cried. It must be run again. Let us have it again. Let's do it again another time. And once more, he went off like the wind in the storm so that he seemed to fly. Very, very fast he ran. But the hedgehog's wife stayed quietly in her place. So when the hare reached the top of the field, the hedgehog himself cried out to him, I am here already. The hare, however, quite beside himself with anger, he of course he was upset, cried, It must be run again, we must have it again. <laughs> All right, answered the hedgehog, for my part, well run as often as you choose. As many times as you decided. So the hare ran 73 times more, 73, and the hedgehog always held out against him. And every time the hare reached either the top or the bottom, either the hedgehog or his wife said, each one of them said, I am here already. And at the last time, at the 74 time, that is 74, the last time, however, the hare could, not lo could no longer reach the end. In the middle of the field, he fell to the ground. Blood streamed out of his mouth. Blood streamed, burst it out of his mouth. And he lay dead on the spot. He died. But the hedgehog took the Louis door, which he had warm, and a bottle of brandy. Called his wife out to the furrow. And both went home together in rage delight. They were happy. And if they are not dead, they are living there still. This is how it happened that, that the hedgehog made the hare run races with him on the Buxterhuda head, Buxterhuda head, till he died. And since that time, no hare has ever had any fancy for running races with a Buxterhuda hedgehog. The moral of this story, however, is firstly, that no one, however right he may be, should permit himself to jest at anyone beneath him, to jest, to sigh, or to, to think, or to, to mock someone, have fun someone, below, below him.
inferior to him, even if he be only a hedgehog. And secondly, it teaches that when a man marries, when someone marries a man, a man marries a woman, he should take a wife in his own position, who looks just as himself. He himself looks. So whosoever is a hedgehog, let him see to it that his wife is a hedgehog also, and so forth. So whosoever is a hedgehog, let him see to it that his wife is a hedgehog also, and so forth. Take the other person in his own position. Put yourself in the other one's shoes. And that is the end of our story, the hare and the hedgehog. Thank you, and see you next time with IELTS Every Day. Goodbye.